Greetings and welcome to Jeffco Films. Today we're going to talk about a scary vampire movie. It's not actually scary at all, but you know, it was requested by Ron, so why not? We're in the month of Halloween. Let's do it. Let's review Tales from the Crypt, The Bordello of Blood. Hey. Nice blood. What the hell did you do that for? Because I want to taste every last bit of you. Um. Okay. This movie starts out with Vincent and some men on jungle horses as they're looking over a map. They eventually find a cavern and a tomb of Lilith. She's a corpse covered in tarantulas. He has her heart in a box and he gives it back to her and she starts to regenerate. They close the casket and we get some special effects of her. Hey, uh, what, a, what is that? The mother of all vampires! <laughs> She kills some of them, but not Vincent, because he has her blood inside of a key which controls her. And then we jump to William Sadler, and unlike the first Demon Knight, where he's actually a really awesome character, he's just the mummy in this one, hanging out with the Crypt Keeper, and the Crypt Keeper tells us a story. Then we jump to Catherine, played by Aaron Elnica. Probably not saying that last name right. She's on her exercise bike, listening to Bible talk, but she's interrupted by Caleb, playing by Corey Feldman, who's listening to music a little bit loud. Then he's at the bar with his buddies throwing darts when a weird bar dude tells him that he should go to a funeral home if he's looking to get laid. I mean, the dead don't say no, I guess. And they go there and an old man tells him to get inside of a coffin. And they look like they're going to get cremated, but it actually slides all the way down this tunnel into the bordello. Are we dead yet? Evening, boys. <laughs> Holy shit. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb's friend who's been hooking up with this girl down there and clearly has very bad looking vampire bite marks uh, has Lilith walk in and she shoves her tongue down his throat so far that it pushes his heart out and then she eats it. Caleb's with another girl and then Lilith shows up but we fade to the sister at the police station. It's been two days. The cops are too busy to listen. So she runs into Rafe Guffman, a private dick, and she tells him that her brother didn't come home. Rafe goes to the bar to talk to Caleb's friends, and after some flirty banter between the gentlemen, they tell him he went to a whorehouse to get laid. I'm telling you, man, that's a bad, bad angle. Ow! You know what? Step outside. You know, Zeke, uh, not right now. <laughs> Just not in the mood for a blowjob. And they give him the address, and he goes to the funeral house, and there's an actual funeral going on. But he's also sitting next to weird bar dude, and it's awkward. Then we jump to the church with Humperdinck, actually Chris Sarandon, and he's playing Reverend Current in this one. I also like that he plays guitar. Erica works for him, and so does Vincent. And Rafe goes there and gives her an update. Then he goes back to the bar, and he runs into weird bar dude again. Sex. You looking for sex? Now they got girls that do things there aren't even names for. <laughs> you know, you make it sound really enticing. He repeats the address, and then we see the funeral home guy being pretty creepy with the dead. So Rafe goes there, but he gets rejected. So he sneaks around and investigates. He overhears Lilith interviewing a girl, and then a scream. I guess she's hired. And then in he hides, and he finds Caleb's nose ring, and then he shows it to Catherine, says he's staking it out tonight. And then he goes down into the bordello, and Lilith shows up. Rafe walks around and enjoys the dance party as Lilith talks to Jenkins, the half-dead bar dude, and he talks too much. I can't take it anymore. It hurts. Men, such big babies. Yeah, I just love a man who gives you a head and lets you keep it. Tammy takes Rafe to the kinky dungeons, where he ties her up, then he drops his wallet and leaves. Somehow he knows that the fireplace is the secret way out, and he sees Jenkins' body, and he heads out. Lil shows up, and she licks Tammy's fingers. Ooh, rare blood type. She wants him, so she shows up at Rafe's place. You know, I'm not going to tell you those aren't the breasts of the century, but I'm just not digging the owner, so why don't you put those away? You're just not my type. So what is your type? She starts playing games trying to figure out what kind of girl he's into and then Catherine shows up and the two of them go to the cops and convince him to go to the mortuary but when they get there they lie and he has no proof so. Vincent and JC are working together he's running the bordello and Rafe investigates a dead man because it doesn't make any sense it doesn't add up but then we get a cat scare. <laughs> huh. 
Vincent steals the key and JC goes to the strip club to find them and Lilith wants to expand to the strip clubs. They're lovely. And Catherine shows up with a news crew. Rafe finds two bodies in a coffin and takes some pictures and Vincent breaks the key because he's an idiot. And then Lilith doesn't show up in any of the pictures or the footage because she's a vampire. And Catherine goes to talk to Rafe about that. Caleb calls his sister Catherine to tell her to meet him in this creepy place. So Rafe and Catherine go and they find them all vamped out. Is he breathing? Hey baby, don't touch me unless you love me. Come on dude, let's party. Rafe falls out a window and gets arrested and taken to the hospital and they take Catherine and the cop is killed by Tammy who's posing as a nurse. But Rafe manages to kill her with the son. Ooh, and Whoopi Goldberg. You want to try to keep it down here, please? I'm trying to rest. I knew I should have taken that private room. I like how all the other vampires are completely normal, but Caleb's extra over the top. And also, Lilith inspects Catherine. I like that even better. Mm. You're disgusting. Breasts are always nice, but I prefer... <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Rafe convinces JC to help, so the two of them break into the bordello of super soakers filled with holy water and ballroom blitz playing. So you can't take this scene seriously at all. And these people just keep exploding, but no blood lands on anybody. Rafe ends up burning a hole through Caleb, and Lilith takes out JC. Rafe shows up to rescue Catherine and before JC dies, he's like, you tell the world, Johnny, you go broadcast that shit. So now they go back to his church where they got the whole studio set up and they try to broadcast, but the cameraman gets taken out by Lilith and then Rafe gets handcuffed to the camera. So, I mean, he can at least still film this. And Lilith takes on Catherine, but Rafe manages to use this weird laser thing they've got and burns a cross onto Lilith. It's not enough to kill her, but maybe getting stabbed by Catherine will do it. I'm gonna grind your balls in a guacamole. Yep, Lilith burns. Catherine and Rafe get her heart and put it in that box, which separates it into four pieces. I guess if it's not together, she can't use her powers. And then the next day, they're in a car doing some flirty banter, and he goes to look up her skirt, and. It's the perfume you're wearing. It's not perfume. It's sunblock. Didn't even get to sleep with her. And then we returned to the Crypt Keeper to bring us all home. The end. With a $2.5 million budget and a $5.6 million box office, Miller said that he would only do the movie for a million dollars. So they cut $750,000 from the special effects budget and it showed. Filmed in Vancouver, Miller hated this script and the majority of his dialogue, so he improvised his lines, which I found kind of amusing. None of his jokes were that funny, but like he just constant banter and like, you know, making fun of other characters in the movie. But I imagine that was very difficult for the director to edit, so he could really not put his film together as well. Everybody's filming schedules were a constant issue, and also Erica had some major problems with this script, as after Baywatch she wanted to be taken seriously as an actor, so she had them rewrite it and make her into like a church girl instead of a stripper or ex-porn star. But I'm not gonna lie, I don't think they changed the dialogue at all, and I've seen porn stars with better acting. Hi sweetie. You really get around, don't you? So, you're into prostitution and strip joints. Mm-hmm. You're a total sex maniac. You know you need professional help. You want to play doctor. Get your hands off. Give me In the end, you had a bordello full of vampires. Yeah, it wasn't sexy. And you had Angie Everhart. So, I mean, wasn't she Schwarzenegger's daughter in Last Action Hero? Come on, guys. She's hot. Also, it wasn't that funny. Even though you had a comedian who was improvising all his lines, it just it didn't make you laugh. It was just kind of ridiculous. And it wasn't scary, even though you had Corey Feldman giving it all college try and being trying to be a creepy vampire. Go watch Lost Boys. That's way better. And Demon Knight, the first one, way better. Why was this even made? I do not know. So I can't recommend you watch this, but when I did watch it, it didn't hurt my brain and I'm not suffering. So it is something you can survive if you wish to. As always, thanks for watching.